Okay, so the obvious question is, do you think the Discovery Bay will come to fruition? And if so, where would you think it would be the most likely to be successful? Well, I, you know, it's, it's always a collection of the needs and the excitement in the public for something, and you have the solution. Uh, several years back, we were desperate to get the submarines open, but we didn't have the product that would make that a viable thing until Finding Nemo came out, and all of a sudden, you know, it was the right thing. And that's why I'm excited about things we're doing, like we did a figment book with Marvel, the uh, comic series, uh, and that I have hopes that would regenerate a lot of interest in figment or cultivate interest in figment for younger kids. So it's not always up to WEI anymore because the world is so complex and there's so many media outlets. And you don't all watch the Beverly Hills Brothers on Wednesday night like you did when I was a kid. And, um, so to find a way to ignite either the genre, which would be the steampunk kind of world, or to ignite um, interest specifically in like the Discovery Bay Chronicles, I still think it would make a great television miniseries uh, to introduce all the characters, because I wasn't able in 40 minutes to talk about all the characters that tell like six or seven stories uh, to make up the cast that you, you know about, that we live there, and we've got like a steampunk adventures, I guess. But uh, yeah, so is there hope? You know, when you when you realize you missed maybe the window, an island at the top of the world, and instead of like reinforcing that it was a good idea, it kind of like well nobody went to it, so they don't like this. And so we found ways to get it out there. And so we opened Discovery Land, we opened the, the volcano over in, in Tokyo. So a lot of what we had planned to do is out there. It's just you have to look for it. You know, even Figment has origins back into uh, you know, Discovery. Tokyo is amazing. Yeah. I got to go to the yeah. Oh, great. Simply amazing. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you, in the last couple of years, you went from the pinnacle of your career with WDI and decided to retire. No, I didn't retire. I, there is an advisor. I go in every week. Okay. And I tend to work more than I did before. Like, this, this was the culmination of six presentations that started last like Wednesday, a week, a week, nine days ago. And this will be the last one now. <laughs> and I've been in San Francisco, New York, here, and LA twice. You know, so that, that's not retirement. So <laughs> we're still part of the company. Yeah. It's just amazing when you changed roles, as that, and then became a legend, and then got a window on Main Street. It must have been quite an amazing. That was a pretty amazing year. Yeah, I would say for anyone that grew up like I did in Orange County, riding my bike to the park, and then suddenly. You know, like I t I've said it several times that having that window is probably the coolest thing because all the people that are on the other windows are from the generation I grew up with. And I think, you know, it's, it's a fact of life. I'm the beginning of the next group to follow them. So, you know, to see all the people I remember working with, many of them are not there anymore. Uh, up there, it's kind of it's a it's a reward, you know. There's Claude, there's Mark, there's John Hinch, there's you know Martin, and all these people. It's, that's pretty impressive. What do, what do you say, Claude would have said at your window dedication? Oh, he would have been so proud, and um, you know I I'm fortunate enough to just break through and call the hospital where he was at the end of his life, and uh, they had taken a tube out so he could talk. We've been here for most of the time, and I told him. You know, this whole park in Paris is dedicated to you. It's everything you taught me. And I know you love it. And when you get better, you know, I can hardly wait to show up to share it. And of course, he was gone in a couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, so that was something I'll treasure that uh, I got that moment. And, uh, you know, we, we, we had met years before I worked with him. He had, I'd snuck down the stairway into the pirate building as an ice cream scooper. And he saw me peeking around the corner. He said, You can't see any of it from there. Why don't you come down here in the track and I'll show you what we're doing. And ten years later we realized it was each of us that were the ones in that moment. And it was like one of those, oh my god, that was you? Oh, you know, and you know, so that was yeah. I loved your discussion earlier today about you know your early your memories working on Walt Disney World here when it was yeah. being built. What what is your favorite your your favorite memory you'll never forget about doing that? Well, I think the the story that I told you about that monorail ride was tied with the the castle, uh, you know, 
those aren't working things. Those were being permitted to be a part of it. That was something that I felt like, you know, I could never be on TV with Walt, you know, where he guided you through the model shop and then said, here's Rolly Crump and here's Harriet Burns. And, I mean, that would be the ultimate thing ever. But to be in the castle, as Roy Disney is saying, I'd like to dedicate this to my brother. And, you know, we all went out like kids and rode the monorail. And I mean, the carousel and then that ride where they lit up the castle and uh, on the monorail. And those that all happened in that August, you know, and those are probably, um, they, they hide all the fact of how hard and hot it was to work in that horrible lagoon, and it was like a basin collecting the sunlight, reflecting off the concrete, and, uh, you know, and I, you didn't complain because you went, they flew me down here, and I'm going to complain about this, you know, I'll endure, you know, and I thought they'd send me home, but I got to last all the way till December because I was single, and uh, they sent all the married people home for Christmas. Christmas, when I lasted all the way up to the, you know, like four or five days before Christmas the first year, so I saw the Christmas season here, and that was pretty neat too. Where were you on the first day? That I was on Main Street, and uh, we listened to Roy do the speech, but we had been all night uh, unpacking chairs and then setting them up in the uh, Tomorrowland Terrace restaurant, and they had all these boxes, and they were well packed, so you had to do all this cutting of straps and stuff, and, get them. and then we were dead tired and they said, oh, they need to put decals on all the, uh, not Autopia, but the Grand Prix Raceway cars, so we had to stick and peel all these road race decals on those, and then the sun came up, and we just stayed, you know, so. Very yeah. How did you handle the mosquitoes? <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've noticed this, but on Disney property, there's a law that if you're a mosquito, you're not allowed to live here. So, I don't know, there's a line on the edge. I love going to the campground. I just had a friend who came down to get married, and I said, stay in the campground. Because the worst thing that would happen is if my wife or I got a bite on our nose or something, and how that would look at the wedding. I said, I have, I've never seen an insect in the campground down here. So I've seen frogs and armadillos, but no, right. no bucks, so I don't know, it's magic. Do so you have an autobiography sort of in your mind someplace for the future? I want to see the next act before I can really, you know, you want, good writing is three acts, definitely we had the first act with Walt. I think I had a pretty golden time where we did some amazing things up and through, you know, Epcot and Star Tours and Indiana Jones. And then there's a new chapter that hasn't totally evolved, and I think it needs to be written. And then you can take perspective on the whole thing. Of, there was that, there's this, and you know, there's this, you know. Is there anything you hope to see in that next one? Yeah, the best rides that are in existence here <laughs> on our property. <laughs> Let it go with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so nostalgia is a really big you know thing nowadays, and you know we've seen the return of like the original Tiki Room to our Magic Kingdom yeah. and, and the Orange Bird. Is there any sort of property or character or attraction you would love to see make well, a comeback? We're looking at uh, the, the thirty somethings and early forty somethings. They're actually the people that grew up on like Epcot and Magic Kingdom here and all that, and they have certain things that are really really important to them as they bring their children. And I think that's the situation we have with Figment. And I would love to see that reconfigured because right now it's kind of, it's not fish nor fowl. It's sort of half the Eric Idle story and it's half bringing Figment back because there's a love of Figment. And the Marvel thing I hope is a, a, a catalyst to develop something with the, the imagination story. I think that is, it's desperately needed to be the, the flagship for children mm -hmm. to get them excited about creating the, the future. And parents that grew up with your first show need to have a show that their kids dearly love so they can pass that tradition on. Yeah, I read and I loved that Figma comic series. And I really felt like I watched that, that last panel. I was like, this is... Well, you'll have the to buy the, the hardbound because I'm going to do the forward for it. Oh, yeah. perfect. It definitely feels like it's setting up for yeah. a hopeful return. Yeah. There's a tour guide at the Magic Kingdom who does the family right. right. tour. Uh -huh. And yeah. he's been yeah. around yeah. with yeah. him yeah. the comic yeah. books. Yeah. And he has just been so yeah. thrilled yeah. introducing yeah. the whole new generation. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, they had the ten or the seven foot one, and uh, you know, it doesn't have the charm that the little pigment that you know Ron and Steve held, you know, in their hands. And so I hope to go back to that too.